and you're welcome. I see. I'm just gonna sit right here and wait on you. Say, can you tell me I'm excused? are clear, would y'all please join me in prayer? Dear gracious, heavenly, most magnificent Father up above, tonight I ask you to come through these doors, enter all of our hearts and our minds, and cover us, Lord. I ask that you cover all graduates as they go across the stage and they start the next chapter in each and every one of their lives. Lord, I ask you to protect our city, protect our citizens. Protect even the people who are, are not in the city but around the outside of the borders. And Lord, I ask you tonight to just do something extra special for each and every one in here who can hear my voice. I don't know what troubles came through the do doors. I don't know what tr troubles came through as they exit the doors. But I want you to, Lord, I'm asking you to just create a peace, a peace of understanding a peace to bridge the gap between anything that's, that divides us. Lord, I ask these things in your name, and I ask you to, pray, to cover each and every decision that each one of these individuals that you placed in place, you put us in this place, Lord, to, be a, to make a difference, to be impactful, and to change lives. These are the things that I ask again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. 
United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Beeman. At this time, I'll ask Mr. Clark if you would please call the roll. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Stevenson? Here. Commissioner Cochran? Here. Bojo? Here. Beeman? Here. Dawes? Here. Quick? Here. Askew? Here. Collins? Here. McDaniel? Here. Thank you. We're all present tonight. Now, can I trust that each of you uh, have had a chance to uh, review our minutes from our May 8th? Meeting with no additions or corrections, they will stand approved as common consent. Tonight we have one proclamation, and I'm going to call on Commissioner Beeman to come up, please. This is Public Works Week. <clears throat> Our Public Works Director. Yes. Yeah. It gives me great honor to present this proclamation from the City of Rome. Whereas the public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are a vital importance to the health, safety, and well-being of our citizens, and whereas such services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts and skills of public works professionals, engineers, and administrators who are responsible for and must design build, operate, and maintain the transportation drainage, water supply, wastewater, and solid waste management systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential to serve our citizens. And whereas it is the public interest for the citizens and civic leaders of this community to gain knowledge and knowledge of and to maintain a progressive interest in the public works needs and programs of, this, of their community. And whereas the efficiency of, a, of the qualified and dedicated personnel who staff our public works department is materially influenced by the people's attitudes and understandings of the importance of the work they perform. Now therefore be it resolved that on behalf of the Rome City Commission, I, Sunday Stevenson, Mayor of the City of Rome, do hereby proclaim the week of May the 19th through May the 25th, 2023 as Public Works Week. In the City of Rome, and I call upon all the citizens and civic organizations to, co to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing our public works and to recognize the contributions which public works officials make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Giving my hand and seal on this 22nd day of May in the year of the Lord, 2023. Congratulations. Well, what a great week in the city of Rome to recognize public works. I'm very proud of the group that I um, get to come in every day and see and work with, and it's truly an honor to do so. There's over 100 employees with the city of Rome uh, public works department. I see um, every day them working together uh, to provide services to the city. Um, you know, there's over 265 miles of road that are, are maintained by the uh, employees at the city of Rome. There's 20,000 um, solid waste collection residents that are served every day. There's over 250 vehicles serviced by the garage department on a, on a weekly basis. Um, the Public Works Administration uh, receives somewhere around 100 to 150 phone calls a day for work orders. So it's, I, I thank you, commissioners, every one of you, for recognizing the City of Rome Public Works Department and their employees. We, uh, we really do an outstanding job, the best we can for you. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, can we make a comment? Uh, yes, I was going here, but you can go ahead, Al. Al you, you can go. <laughs> so our city employees are our most valuable asset, and, and we greatly appreciate their dedication and their service to this very special city. And, Chris, 
please relay that to your employees. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, sir. Just Matt one Finley. other comment, Madam Mayor, if I may. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of times we commissioners are not really supposed to make contact with you department heads, but a lot of times I can't resist making contact with Chris Jenkins because we have a great rapport. We talk a lot about situations that come to us as citizens that come to us. In turn, I get a chance to relay that, even though I can call Miss Kelly at any time and, hey, could you get me a work order on this or that? But I really love the opportunity to interact with the department head. Just know that it's always our conversation is going to be out of respect, uh, common courtesy, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. Anyone else before I attempt to say something? <laughs> Okay, thank you. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> I just want to reiterate, and Chris knows that I love him. Well, you know, I love everybody, but and I, I love all of our employees at, at the city of Rome, and public works is dear to my heart. And uh, to, to explain to you, that was my first baby when I came here eight years ago. I, I was over <laughs> public works department. I, I was the commissioner assigned to that. But I just appreciate everything they do, because if, it was not for public works, you're know, picking up our garbage, fixing our potholes, making sure that our street lights are on. Where would we be in the city of Rome? You know, it takes everybody working together, but Chris, thank you all. And reiterate that, please, to the employees, that they are appreciated immensely. We thank them for what they do day in and day out to make the city of Rome what it is. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All righty, moving right along. Our guest tonight, we're gonna start with item B, Recognition of our Bridge Academy graduates. So I'm going to call on the city manager Thank and Miss Ke uh, Miss Kelly. Are you coming up? Okay, okay. And Miss Christy, you all come. We've on got up? an A team. I know, of, right? Uh, okay, I'll get it right. <laughs> in the audience tonight, that's going to talk to us a little bit about the uh, the bridge. And if you guys read your your Friday update, you know we just celebrated our second class graduation. So what is bridge?
So um, if you guys will bear with me, I'd like to, uh, if I could call our employees up. And when I call your name, we're not, there's not going to be a test like at graduation where everybody got a chance to say something. But I would like you to come stand up front and maybe we could con Doug into taking a photo. And then I would ask the commissioners to maybe come around and greet you. So let's, uh, so if you're here tonight, please come up. Miss Karen Ostell in transit. I know Miss Jennifer Bailey in DDA is here. Gina Brown in purchasing is here. Please come on. Y'all come, don't be bashful. Come on up front. Kara Burgess in human resources. Uh, Valerie Connell in police. Brandon Cook in water. Havish Deep, Nair, um, Deep, Deep Naren from OTS. Tyler Fabian transit. Mark Green, clerk's office. Ryan Harris in Rome PD. Curtis Klimke, water reclamation. Molly Majestic, Community Development, Jenny Morales, Public Works, Jenna Lee Roberts and Police, uh, Darren West, Public Works, and last but not least, Bryce Wood in the Planning Department. So let's see if we can squeeze in and get a panoramic photo. Congratulations again, and thank each of you for all that you do every day. And have a good evening. I see they're deciding to leave. They're not. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to stay. They were obviously torn in their decision. Yes. <laughs> Miss Carrie, you're next if you want to get ready. We have one registered guest tonight, Miss Carrie Jones, and she's already at the podium. If you would, please, ma'am, give us your name and address, and you have up to three minutes. <coughs> My name is Carrie Jones. My address is P.O. Box 1142, Rome, Georgia. I have come to speak this evening on consistency. I realize that this body in particular is known for its inconsistency, at least as far as we're half joking, right? Two weeks ago, I spoke at the Floyd County Commissioner's meeting regarding this same topic. I remind you that in your oath of office, you swore that you would have due regard for the charter of the city of Rome the Constitution and laws in the state of Georgia and of the United States of America, and that you would not be influenced by fear, favor, affection, or reward. The Charter states in two, Section 2-10 two 
that the Commission shall have full power and authority to pass all laws and ordinances that they may consider necessary for the peace, good order, health, prosperity, comfort and security of the city and of the inhabitants thereof, and that may, uh, comfort and security and inhabitants thereof, and that may be necessary to foster virtue and good morals in the city, to suppress lewdness, gambling, disorderly conduct, and to enforce such laws and ordinances. As we head into this next month, I remind you that in section 23-304, subsection A, requires a license for an adult entertainment establishment. Section D forbids an unlicensed employee, uh, unlicensed employed dancers under the age of 18. Section E forbids persons under the age of 18 to be admitted into an adult entertainment establishment. Section K forbids patrons to directly pay or give gratuity to any dancer. Section L forbids dancers to solicit any pay or gratuity from any patron. Section 23-308 makes admission for liner, for my, of minors unlawful. Section 23.310 limits location where no entertainment establishment may be within 500 feet of a church, school, government building, library, civic center, public park, or playground. Our city ordinances above make it clear regarding what behavior and items are not to be displaced in a public park in front of minors. Last year, there were videos which made their way around the county, state, and country in which these ordinances were openly violated. Sex toys were on tables in a public park where children were present. Last year, drag shows in which children attended at local businesses were shared on social media. These businesses did not file for the appropriate permits for adult entertainment, and the ordinances are clear yet again. Doing this with children present is a no-go. These matters were shoved under the rug as quickly as possible and were not addressed. Regardless how you feel about the ordinances, it is both healthy and respectful to clearly define what is in bounds and what is not in bounds when pertaining to sexual material and behavior. Consistency is key when creating and enforcing boundaries. The ordinance should reflect the values and boundaries of the community. If the ordinance is bigoted and exclusionary, then it must be changed. I urge the commission to address the ordinances and open them for public input and review if this is the case. Otherwise, uphold what is written in the <coughs> ordinance. A repeat of last year's half enforcement and zero clarification is unacceptable. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have no resolutions tonight. Nothing that's is under first reading. Under second reading, we have ordinance closing a portion of Park Court, and we have in closing, I'm going to call on the city manager. Thank you, Madam uh, Mayor. What we have before us tonight is a closure that has worked its way through the process and in fact it uh, started at Public Works Committee and has made its way here tonight after following uh, the process and say so what's before us is a 25 foot right of way and this would be adjacent uh, the old AT&T building over on 2nd Avenue and it's where we have seen construction in the recent days uh, making way for new residential and so madam mayor to finish this out we will need a motion uh, tonight to take action on this matter okay thank you mr manager at this time i'll entertain a motion for closing yeah okay i have a motion do i have a second i second it okay a motion and a second any discussion hearing none mr clerk if you will please call the roll yes ma'am commissioner cochran yes bojo yes Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. <clears throat> Quick? Yes. Askew? Yes. Collins? Yes. McDaniel? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Motion carries. Okay, we have nothing continued on first reading. Uh, under public hearings, we do have three tonight. And okay, I will call on okay, Mr. Wood. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, we have three items for you tonight. The first is an annexation for the property at 7 Billy Powell Road, Rome, Georgia, 30165, Floyd County Tax Parcel H130182. Uh, the request is to annex in the, into the city with no proposed change in use or zoning. Uh, this is the applicant parcel outlined in red. You can see uh, somewhat of a county island surrounded by city. This is the application itself. The property is a fraction of an acre. This is looking in the street, and just a couple other photos of the immediate area. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the reason for the request was to have access to city trash pickup. This did come with a recommendation of approval from staff, 
and a 7-0 vote of approval from the Planning Commission. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Quick. And then motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Public <laughs> hearing. I'm getting ahead of myself. At this time, I'll declare the public hearing open. Do I have anyone here to speak in favor of? Do I have anyone here to speak in opposition of? Seeing and hearing none, I will declare the public hearing closed. <coughs> and now at this time, Commissioner Quick, I will entertain a motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now I will make a motion to approve this, this request for annexation. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Clark, if you will, please call the roll. Commissioner Cochran? Yes. Bojo? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Ask you? Yes. Collins? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Wood? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the next one is coming back to you. This is file Z23-01, the property at Zero Technology Parkway, Northwest, Rome, Georgia, 30165, Full County Tax Parcels, H12W016F and H12Z006A. Uh, the request is to rezone from light industrial to heavy industrial. These are the two applicant properties outlined in red. Uh, this is only possible if the two properties are merged together because there is still a, a minimum five acre lot size for heavy industrial. Uh, if you see across the top side of the parcels, there is an, a, a utility easement that runs through them. Uh, that combined with the floodplain plus the fact that you have 200 foot setbacks means that five acres shrinks drastically when you start talking about heavy industrial. Uh, it has much more development potential as it currently sits as light industrial. This is the current zoning map as it sits. This is provided by the applicant. This is a site plan of how the applicant intends to use the property. The proposed use is a uh, wood incinerator. It's uh, actually a pretty technologically advanced thing um, as opposed to the old burn pits that you used to, you used to see. Uh, this does show where trucks would come in, unload, and uh, turn around. Uh, there is an area for chipping as well as for logs. Staff report itself, the application. Some pictures provided by the applicant. <coughs> A letter provided by Danny Price of Barry. Uh, this is uh, email between Art and the applicant. This was a letter provided by an attorney who represents several of the neighbors to the south. Uh, it speaks about some covenants that may or may not be applicable to the property. industrial properties along Technology Parkway. However, I believe the next smallest one is 35 acres in size. Most of them are well over 100 acres in size, making them having, giving them much more development potential than this particular one. Uh, this is a letter from uh, Missy Kendrick that was provided after the last time it came before the City Commission. This is a picture looking into the property, looking west on uh, Technology Parkway, looking directly across Technology Parkway back towards Redmond Circle. Uh, this is the device itself. Uh, there is a statement in there from Brian Roberts, our environmental compliance manager, stating that if you do choose to approve, that you know there are some conditions put in place. Uh, I also got a phone call from the Georgia Forestry Service who stated that it would need to comply with the requirements of the Air Branch and the Solid Waste Division of the EPD. Uh, but this does come with a staff recommendation of denial. Uh, the first time this went to the Planning Commission, it had a unanimous vote of support. Uh, this time it received a five to one, I believe. Five to two, excuse me, a five to two vote of support. And, uh, Brandy Townsend made a motion to deny, which was seconded by Jake Hager. The motion was voted down by a vote of five to two with Tom Bennett, Frank Brown, Leanne Cook, Dick Hickson, and Anthony McLean dissenting, thus resulting in a recommendation of approval. Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll declare the public hearing 
open. Do we have anyone here to speak in favor of? Do we have anyone here to speak in opposition of? Okay, Mr. Bagley, give us your name and your address, please. Hey, Lee Bagley, 932 North 2nd Avenue. Uh, I think we've been over the parameters of what this is and how green this is and what this does. Um, there's there's no traces once this development, so to speak, is, is done and the infrastructure is there to sell off to somebody else. If somebody else approaches me on a better development for this said property, but at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, there's been one development happen up and down technology in the last decade. So it's not like it looks to me like it's a real sought after area to do development, but I am a businessman. And if something comes upon me uh, to develop this in a better main shape, fashion or form, obviously I will take advantage of that. But as of right now, you know, I don't see why anybody would oppose doing what I'm doing. The infrastructure that I will be putting in could quickly be flipped into some other type of development. No remnants are left on the property, as said before, and it would be a clean slate for somebody to do something else with in the future, and this is a good development for the area. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. No one speaking in opposition of I'll declare the public hearing closed. I commission a quick at this time. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, ma'am. I will make a recommendation to approve the rezoning with the stipulations that came from the Planning Commission, and uh, I'll make that motion. I second that. And I'm sorry, y'all. I have followed the EPA requirements for clean air burning and uh, all the requirements. I didn't mention that they have asked on me, so that since this unit has been burning. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Okay, do you have any discussion? I, I have a couple of questions, Madam yes, Mayor. Sir. <clears throat> Bryce, is there a similar operation like that in Floyd County today? That is the first time I've seen that device, so if there is, I'm not aware of it. Okay. Uh, for, if, if this isn't approved, could storage buildings be put on that property? Would it be light industrial or heavy industrial? Miniature uh, warehouses are light industrial. Okay, any more questions for anyone on my right? Okay, any any questions? Okay, Commissioner Dallas. So my question is, as I understand it, this uh, device was used on John Davenport in the past? Yes, sir. Any other questions? Why are you moving from John Davenport out here? I sold that piece of property. We up that piece of property. I'm sorry. We sold that piece of property on, on John, John Davenport. Davenport. To Mike Mathis. Yes, sir. Okay. And so it required me to move the unit somewhere else. All right. I, and, and I may. I'm going to ask this question. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to. I was told that the fire department had visited you a few times on the John Davenport property for some reason? Only for the one I just stated. For when the ash? Yes, sir. When the helicopter was in town, um, it, it created ash that we really couldn't see from the leaves and stuff on the trimmings of the helicopter. You know when the helicopter was in town trimming yeah. the power lines? Yeah. So we took all of their debris, and, and long story short, once we figured that out, that was that was snipped, and we stopped doing that, and that was the only reason they came and visited for that. Reason. How close is this to residential? You know how far? I mean, it, it's it's far enough to meet the to the required minimums of being away from from housing and residential. But there's literally, I've got videos <coughs> of this unit burning, and there's literally no smoke and no ash. So there's no smell coming no, out of it.
Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Clark, if you will, please call the roll. Uh, I'll note that Commissioner Cochran has left the room. <laughs> Commissioner Bojo. Just a second. No. Beeman? Yes. Doss? Yes. Quick? Yes. Askew? Yes. Collins? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Okay. Item C. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. The last item we have for you is file Z23-05-05 for the property at 1219 East 2nd Avenue, uh, Southeast, Rome, Georgia, 30161, Floyd County Tax Parcel J14J328, which requ requests rezoning from community commercial to light industrial. Uh, this is the property outline, and I guess we'll call it turquoise. Um, it is at the corner of Merrill Avenue and East 2nd Avenue, just off of Dean Avenue. Uh, it is an old warehouse. Uh, there is no other light industrial in the immediate area, but you do have heavy commercial directly across Merrill Avenue, which is uh, Albert Robertson's auto body shop. So there are similar type buildings in the area. It's not out of character. Uh, the applicant is proposing to use this as a place to roast and distribute coffee to retailers. So it would not be open to the public. Uh, therefore, it really doesn't need a lot of parking. It is a small business operation, so it won't have a lot of employees. Uh, this is the building itself. Uh, it, it pretty much occupies almost the entire parcel, so any concept of setbacks or parking requirements pretty much all go out the window, uh, which drastically limits the potential uses for the building. Uh, whereas CC, which is currently zoned, is typically some sort of retail or office space, which typically needs more parking. would be serviced by box trucks, so you're not likely to see any you know, large 18-wheelers, which have a great deal of trouble traversing this particular road. Uh, you do have some roll-up doors on the sides for deliveries. Uh, there is a small additional building at the rear of the property, and a small fenced-in, we'll call it a parking lot. This is just some other pictures of what's in the nearby area. You have some duplexes, uh, back of the townhouses, and Elbert Robertson. Uh, this did come with a staff recommendation of approval, and the Planning Commission approved by a vote of 7-0. to zero. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At this time, I'll declare the public hearing open. Do we have anyone here to speak in favor of? Do we have anyone here to speak in opposition of? Seeing and hearing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, Madam Mayor, please. I make a motion that we approve this request to rezone from community commercial to light industrial for this property, 1219 East 2nd Avenue Southeast. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? <coughs> hearing none, Mr. Clark, if you will please call the roll. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Cochran? Yes. Bojo? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dawes? Yes. Quick? Yes. Askew? Yes. Collins? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Uh, and I think that, that was the last one. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Woods. Okay, going on. Mr. Clark? No report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Manager? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just briefly, the City of Rome administrative offices will be closed for Memorial Day on Monday, May 29th. For those interested in our garbage uh, pickup, Monday's garbage, yard waste, and recycling will all be serviced on Tuesday. The Tuesday uh, route will be pushed to Wednesday. Thursday, Friday will be serviced as usual, and then the Walker Mountain landfill is going to be closed in observance on Memorial Day. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Attorney. Thank you, sir. Under my time, the rescheduled meeting of the Rome Floor Development Authority will be held tomorrow, Tuesday, May 23rd at 10 a.m. in their boardroom at 800 Broad Street. Okay, Commissioner uh, Cochran. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Only a meeting announcement for the Health Board will be held Thursday, June the 8th at 12 p.m. at the Floyd County Health Department. Thank you. Okay, 
Thank you, sir. Commissioner Bojo. Uh, yes, ma'am. The uh, Community Redevelopment Committee will meet this Wednesday, May 24, 30 in the Sam King Room. And we've got some other issues, and I'm going to defer to Mr. Manager for that. Thank you, Commissioner Bojo. What we have before us tonight was a, a matter that went before the Community Redevelopment, and this involves a parcel that is owned by the city. It's a former uh, city pump station that's no longer in service. And so, um, as you will see in the aerial photo, there is an adjacent uh, church that has expressed an interest in acquiring some of this property. And so the drawing you see before you, there's uh, the letter 678 in the center of the screen. And to the left of that, you will see an area kind of approximated in red. And so what we're proposing is uh, this property be transferred from the city ownership to the Rome Floyd County Land Bank Authority. And then the Land Bank Authority will be able to deal directly um, with disposal of the property. The area identified, the 40-foot strip, would be retained because we do have existing water sewer infrastructure in place there. And so in, instead of getting into confusion with that, we'll just retain that parcel. And so this does come before you tonight as a recommendation from the uh, Community Redevelopment Committee, but we will need action to make this happen. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, this time, Commissioner Bojo, I will entertain a motion. Yeah, I'm, I make that form of motion that okay. we transfer it to land bank. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, if you would, Mr. Court, please call the roll. Commissioner Cochran? Yes. Bojo? Yes. Beeman? Yes. Dolls? Yes. Quick? Yes. Askew? Yes. Collins? Yes. McDaniel? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Bojo, could okay. I, uh, either Mr. Manager, either one, did we not receive the grant, big grant money for uh, Park Hopes over there? Not I'm Park Hopes. I can't Banner hear Jones Park uh, from the governor? I, if we have, I don't, I'm not aware of it. I'm so, I missed the first part of what you said, Commissioner. Sorry. Did we not receive a large sum of money, a grant from the governor's office for Banner Jones Park? Yes, sir. Indeed, uh, that was uh, recently announced, I believe, on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and sir. you remember, recall how much that was? I was thinking it was uh, 2 or $2.5 million, but I'd have to pull they, that they were, they were expecting $2 million. They got a little more. 2.2. 2.2. 2.2 million. We did receive it, I understand. Y yes, two excellent, two. excellent okay. news. Okay. So the good news is instead of building this park piecemeal, We'll be able to do it all at once. That's I think right. we have a total allocated for that park, Mr. Manager, of four point something million. I think, yeah, we had some different buckets of money. And so uh, now that, of course, we've received this good news, my assumption is when we um, get back to Community Redevelopment Committee with Ms. Fox, we'll be able to sort of see what is this going to do for our financial picture. But, but it is absolute good news for the community and a chance for us to go in and seriously redevelop that park. And hopefully that will be a catalyst for other redevelopment in the area. That's great. And the governor also awarded some money to Willingham Village out in Ward 3 out there, out there in West Strong. That's correct, because the city deeded the property back to the Housing Authority. Thank you, Sandy. Right. And we will have a park in Willingham Village in West Strong. And so Banny Jones Park will be Rome's newest community park. Correct. <clears throat> yes. That's correct. Outstanding. Thank you. That was good news. I want to say thank you to the governor for including us in the allocation this time. We, we sincerely appreciate it. That's what we do. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? Yeah, the Transportation Policy Committee, the TCC and the TPC Committee, uh, there'll be a called meeting this uh, Thursday morning, 9 o'clock, in the Carnegie Training Room. And uh, our June 1st Water and Sewer Committee meeting is being postponed. Uh, our guys are gearing up for our litigation that starts, and they need to be concentrating on that. And there's really nothing else that we need to discuss in length. So. Depending on how the, the court goes, we'll have another meeting. All right. And that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Commissioner Beeman. I have no reports. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Dowles. 
only under trails and rivers that uh, it's becoming now uh, what I call trail season and it's a great time to get out on some of our new trails the Mount Berry Trail um, is a if you haven't seen it it's it's as beautiful as any trail around and in the not too distant future we're going to connect that trail so we'll have a, a loop and it'll be the most fantastic trail goal that we've achieved as a city and a community and a county and so uh, thank you that's it thank you sir okay commissioner quick thank you madam mayor the downtown development authority will meet thursday june 8th 8 30 in the carnegie training room and the rome floyd county planning commission will meet thursday june 1st 2 30 in the sam king room and that's all i have thank you sir commissioner ask you <clears throat> the uh, Solid Waste Commission will meet tomorrow at 8.30 in the Sam King Room, um, and that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Collins. Just to announce that our general administration meeting will not be meeting this month. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Commissioner McDaniel. <clears throat> uh, tourism Committee will meet Wednesday, May 24th at 11.45 a.m. At the Rome Area History Center, and that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you, sir. I'd like to uh, wish everyone a happy and safe Memorial Weekend. You all enjoy, and with that, we are adjourned. Ma'am. 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 Uh oh, uh, yes, sir. Let's announce our executive session. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, today we went into thank you, sir. We went into executive session, and uh, Commissioner Quick. I'm sorry to go into. Uh, executive session commissioner beeman uh, made the motion it was second by commissioner mcdaniel and to come out of uh executive session commissioner quick made a motion and it was second by commissioner beeman and there was no action taken now you are adjourned have a good weekend before you go i guess